Chris was born October 17th, 1971 in uh, Clarion, Pennsylvania. I was very, very young when I had him and I wasn't sure what to expect. He was a very cute baby, he had dark brown eyes, but hairy, really hairy. He looked like Elvis. <laughs> Chris's father and I separated when Chris was six months old. It was very hard for Chris. Sometimes he tells people he and I grew up together and that breaks my heart because he deserved a grown-up mom. And a lot of times he didn't have that. Just can't do that at 16. When I first met Chris Kirkpatrick, he was in sixth grade. I was directing the high school production of Oliver. I was auditioning elementary students. He came home one day and he said, Mom, I want to try out for a play. He was very tiny, very, very small for his age. He said, son, could you read these lines for me? And it really surprised me because Chris read them with a Cockney accent. Please, sir. I knew this was the one for Oliver. But there's times where Oliver has to be very sad and he would pretend to be sad. He was very good at that. Chris moved away from our town very shortly after the production. from Pennsylvania to Ohio. Our first apartment was over a drugstore. I was a single mom off and on. I had three children at the time that I was raising. It was very difficult for Chris because there were more traditional families there and there were not very many people on welfare. He did get a job as soon as he was old enough to get his working papers. He bagged groceries. He would come home and hand me his check and I'd say, keep some of this for yourself. And he'd go, that's okay, Mom, I don't need anything. He never asked for anything. He really didn't. He just wanted to be the man of the house. He wanted to take care of things. I first met Chris when I was a junior and he was a freshman. We stood together in the choir. Chris was very confident. He didn't show when he was dancing because he was always looking at somebody else's feet. <laughs> show choirs, they do more dancing, so you get to see moves and they're more show tunes. I remember thinking, how am I going to match him up with a, a girl for the dance numbers who looked like a little kid? He used to come home from school crying about his height. And I kept telling him, someday you're going to be really glad that you look so young. He loved sports. Football was his favorite sport. He played baseball. Of course, he played basketball all the time. He was going into the gym at lunchtime just playing ball. I got a call from a friend who worked in the cafeteria at the school. She said, do you know that your son doesn't eat lunch? Well, my son was scrawny enough. I needed him to eat lunch, and he got free lunches. There are free lunch programs. This school system forced the children to identify themselves in front of all of their peers. My son had to go up and say free lunch, and he could not do that. And so he was playing basketball alone in the gym every day at lunchtime, rather than embarrass himself and eat a free lunch. I didn't realize till later that's what he was doing. I said, okay, I don't want to be on welfare anymore. So I went back to college and I kept three jobs at the same time. It was important to him. I think for his self-esteem that um, I try to get out of that system. When it was time for Chris to choose colleges, we called his biological father and he said that he would love to have Chris move down to Florida with him and he would pay for his college. He said, yeah, I'm going to go down and kind of get to know my father. I think not having a dad present in his life, being very, very small, being very poor and uh, living in a single parent household, he just really wanted to claw his way out of there. I first met Chris uh, December 93. He was going to school at uh, Valencia in Orlando, studying music. He was taking courses during the week. 
and singing on the weekends. <laughs> The Hollywood High Tones were a doo up group that were in front of Mel's Drive In at Universal Studios. He would stand there and sing, and little girls would just be like, Lou Pearlman would show up at the park and would just kind of sit back and kind of listen and cross his arms and Lou always had a an entourage. <laughs> he got into the music business after doing the charter flights for various pop tours. Transcontinental is his company. At one point, New Kids on the Block came and leased a jet from him to fly around in their tour said, wow, if a boy band could be so successful that they can lease my jets, there must be a lot of money in this game. He started developing bands, the first one being Backstreet Boys. He needed another band to get the younger sisters of the girls that he'd already hooked with the Backstreet Boys. Chris came to me and he's like, I just talked to this guy, Lou Pearlman, and he wants to put together another group. Lou liked what he heard from Chris and uh, picked him up right away. Lou is a super nice guy. Super nice guy. They took us in his Rolls Royce and we pull off the planet Hollywood and we get the like VIP treatment. He would tell us what his goals were and talk about where he can take the guys. Mr. Perlman said, why don't you put a band together and I will finance the band. Lou offered Chris a real good opportunity to do what he wanted to do. Chris's face would just light up and there's this huge smile, and, you know, determination to get this together. It's like, so I gotta find four more guys. Coming up. JC struggles with self-confidence. He was very shy and he was not interested in performing in front of others. He just always thought he sucked. And Justin learns the fine art of competition in his first beauty pageant. Not only did he do the talent, but he did the modeling and the whole bit. Later, a mysterious fifth member makes a tough decision. I never wanted to be a teen idol. Never, never was a goal of mine. And the boys struggle with the not so glamorous side of celebrity. Chris called me almost every night from Europe. This is really tough. We were in 37 countries in a year, and we were just on the road all the time, 24 7, just promote, promote, promote. Every rock star's relentless drive to the top has been witnessed by innocent bystanders. I was five years old, Sitting would sing anyway. And VH1's got all their names and numbers.